will be talking about the pancake stretch. All right, so this Mobility Academy show episode will be about the pancake stretch and how to develop the uh, pancake stretch. All right, so let me uh, show you like uh, the pancake stretch is this uh, position right here. You can see um, on the uh, right pick, all right, where you basically have your legs wide apart and you fold your trunk in between your legs. Of course, the um, pancake stretch is a really important stretching position and you can see the pancake stretch done in many different dis disciplines, like uh, from gymnastics, calisthenics, hand balancing, yoga, and um, many others, like where you basically need to bring your uh, torso closer to your legs, all right? so. In every movement you, where you need to bring your uh, torso closer to your legs, could be also a squat, for example, you need this kind of flexibility, all right? So um, I don't know why you may need the pancake stretch, but uh, trust me, the, the situations where people actually need more pancake flexibility are... Uh, like are huge calisthenics people do need pancake flexibility hand balancers do need pancake flexibility yoga people do need pancake flexibility um, people who lift weights do need pancake flexibility gymnastic people do need fl uh, pancake flexibility just to mention some like wherever you need some kind of flexibility it's not a hundred percent like um, sure that you need the pancake, but uh, it's really close to that. It's really close to that. So I, I would say it's really, really close to that. So guys, one um, one thing like before I start uh, this um, online show here, where I'm gonna uh, talk about the pancake stress and how to improve or learn. The pancake stretch. I wanna, um, I wanna ask you to uh, leave your comments down below. Just to ask questions, of course. If you got any questions or doubts throughout this um, online show, please make sure you leave them down here in the comments. And also, if you leave a comment, you can win a free copy of my pancake video course, where you can learn everything, really everything, about the pancake stretch. All right, guys, so are you ready to start? Are you ready to start? Let's start this um, live show. So first thing, what are you going to learn throughout this um, seminar? Okay, so point number one, the anatomy of a pancake stretch, of course, you got to know how the pancake stretch works. So what are the muscles involved in the position? How your joints move? In the position etc okay point number two the pancake technique so how uh, the pancake actually works all right so what is the correct technique you gotta understand to perform the pancake stretch and then point number three the use uh, the useful drills of course you gotta understand what are the best exercises you can do to reach the pancake stretch all right guys so Let's move on. Point number one, the anatomy of a pancake stretch. Okay, so how your legs are placed here. The pancake stretch is the combination between two movements that are happening in the hips. The hip abduction and the hip flexion. All right, so the hip flexion movement happens when your trunk gets closer to your legs or vice versa. So take a look at the two picks right here um, below the first one, which is the side split. Okay, so um, the two picks down below. Okay, this is hip flexion. So where I'm basically bringing my uh, leg towards my torso. As you can see, I have one leg uh, down, which is the standard position of our legs. Then if I bring the leg closer to my torso, Okay, in the front part of my torso, I mean, in the front part towards my abdominals region, all right? Um, this is hip flexion, all right? Now, this is the first movement 
which happens in the pancakes. The second one is hip abduction, okay? And the hip abduction happens when you uh, basically bring your legs wide apart to the side, exactly on the side. All right, guys? So you you want to bring your legs much like in a uh, much, much much like in a middle split, much like in a side split, okay? A side split is a perfect example of hip abduction. All right, guys? So hip flexion and hip abduction are the two movements that create the pancake stretch. So um, the pancake combina- uh, the pancake stretch is the combination between the two, okay? As a matter of fact, hip abduction can be performed at different degrees of both hip flexion or extension, and n- not only following a parallel line with the body, as in a side split, okay? So um, the pancake stretch is not a side split. In a pancake stretch, you have your legs in abduction, of course, your hips in abductions because your uh, legs are spread wide apart, but not, but they're not like perfectly in line with your body. They're a little bit towards your abdominal region. So they are also in flexion. All right. That's why like uh, in the pancake, we're, um, we talk about hip flexion and abduction. And you can see that here, as you can see, the second pick, 140 degrees of abduction here, for example. I'm not in a side split. I'm in a pancake stretch. But as you can see, my legs are slightly more towards my abdominal region. So for this reason, I would say that this is hip flexion and abduction. All right? Do you got that? Let me know if you got that. Of course, if you got any questions, just leave them in the comments. All right? So... Is there a difference between the first and the second pick now? Okay, so as you can see, the first pick, a 90 degree angle pancake. As you can see, 90 degree angle. My legs are a little bit, like I would say, very close. Not that much, but they're actually much closer than the second pick where I have my legs really wide apart, 140 degrees. But is there any difference here? And of course there is. The pancake with the legs wide apart is actually harder compared to the 90 degrees pancake if we watch it from a hip abduction perspective. All right, so what I mean with that is that here in the um, in the first pick, okay, I have my legs um, not that wide apart. And in the second pick, I have my legs really wide apart. So, of course, I do need more hip abduction to perform the second pick, the the pancake in the second pick, all right? And in the same manner, the pancake with the legs at at a 90 degree angle is much harder if we watch it from a hip flexion perspective. So, guys, here, same. Of course, if I widen my legs, okay, and uh, I go into hip flexion, since my legs are that wide apart, I don't need a lot of hip flexion, okay? But in the first pick, since my legs are not that abducted, they're really close to each other, I do need more hip flexion to bring my torso down. That's how our hips work, all right? This is due to the fact that hip flexion gets harder if the legs are staying in line with the body, in front of the body, much like in a pike position, you know, like the pike position where you, have, where you have your legs together and you bring your trunk down. So that is the most difficult angle for hip flexion because your our legs are in front of us, not to the side. All right? So um, hip flexion gets harder if the legs are staying in line with the body, in front of the body, and gets easier if they move outside that line outwards. So the more you spread your legs wide apart, the more the hip flexion gets easier. All right? Now, um, hip abduction and flexion are the major movements that take place in a pancake stretch, okay? But there is also another one, which is the knee extension. 
Okay. Now, guys, of course, you do need hip abduction and you do need also um, hip flexion. Okay. And to um, understand what are the muscles that are involved in these two movements, we got to watch at the anatomy of the positions. Okay. So take a look at this. Okay. So the first pick or the second pick. Both require hip flexion and extension. All right. And uh, sorry, hip flexion and hip abduction. All right. And uh, hip abduction, abduction, so spreading your legs wide apart requires adductors flexibility. So the major muscles involved in this movement here are the adductors. So if you want to spread your legs wide apart, you got to stretch your adductors. All right? In the same way, the hip flexion is a movement that requires a slightly different kind of flexibility. Because to perform a um, really deep hip flexion, you do need hip extensors flexibility. So the hip extensors are mostly the hamstrings, okay, the glutes, and um, like I would say a little bit also the adductors because they actually extend some um, some like small fibers of the adductors also extend the hip, okay, and they may limit the hip flexion. Okay, so you do need hamstrings flexibility, you do need glutes flexibility, and a little bit, just a little bit of adductors flexibility to maximize your hip flexion. So, guys, remember adductors for hip abduction, so you got to stretch your adductors, hamstrings and glutes for hip flexion, so you got to stretch your hamstrings and glutes to move your legs. But in a pancake stretch, you also need knee extension because your knee, your knees got to be straight, of course, of course. And the major muscle, mus muscle that limit the knee extension are the hamstrings and the calves. Okay, so the hamstrings again, we, uh, like we have just said that mm, to improve your hip flexion, you do need more hamstrings flexibility. And you need more hamstrings flexibility also to extend your knees more, to work on your knee extension. And uh, the calves are um, different muscles. You can work on them. We're going to see how to do that. But really remember that you also need calves of flexibility if you want to improve your pancake stretch. One calf's, muscles, um, one calf's muscle in particular limits the knee extension, and it's called the gastrocnemius. All right, so you can check it out. There's not the place just to give uh, really deep anatomy information because this uh, seminar is quite long. So I don't want to uh, give you information which you don't need at the moment. If you need to figure out where's the gastrocnemius, just check it out. All right. And then come back here. So make sure to target it specifically, though, because if you have your uh, gastrocnemius really tight, then you'll have a really bad time stretching the pancake because your calves will, um, like, uh, will be really tight and they won't allow you to stay in the stretch comfortably. Okay, so really make sure that you can target it specifically, especially if you are a beginner or an intermediate. Calves muscles are really difficult to stretch at the beginning, and most of the times, and most of the time, uh, they get stiff before the others. All right, so really make sure, really make sure that you stretch your calves before. Anything else? Like, uh, um, I wouldn't say before anything else because everything is important in a pancake stretch. You got to stretch all the muscles, but you got to pay attention also to the calves. 
All right. So um, the pancake technique again. All right. We'll be talking about the pancake technique now. So make sure that you have understood the anatomy of the pancake stretch. So the muscles that move your legs in this way. So the adductors and uh, um, the hamstrings and the glutes, all right? And also the calves and the gastrocnemius, all right? These are the main muscles you should care about if you want to improve your pancake stretch. All right, guys? Is it clear? Now, once you have a clear idea of the muscles involved in the position, you got to understand the technique of a pancake stretch. Okay? So you widen your legs. <laughs> you try to get deep into the stretch. And you got to know what to do there. All right? The general technique of a pancake stretch is pretty easy. Um, it, like, it's pretty easy to understand. Okay? The trunk must be in between the legs, in line with them. So if I um, watch the pancake from the side, I want to see that the trunk is parallel with the legs, the same line, as you can see here, it's this big, okay? Forming a perfectly flat angle, of, uh, of course, here. I, I want to see that the legs and the trunk are forming a perfectly flat angle. And if you perform it on floor, your abs and chest must touch the floor. Your abs first, your abs first, and your chest must touch, must touch the floor. So really important that you drive, if you want to have a really perfect pancake, your abs must touch the floor, your abs. All right? At this point, though, it's important to understand few concepts that make a pancake more functionally useful for the range of motion gains you can achieve. All right. So these are the lower and middle back positioning and the anterior pelvic tilt. So you, of course, you know now how to do that, but it's pretty easily understandable because, like, you know, like you must have your trunk on the floor and your legs straight. And your flat uh, and um, your trunk and your legs must form a flat angle. That's not difficult to understand. But how to do that? So how to position your lower and middle back just to just to create this flat lower and middle back, and how to position your hips in order to stay with your hips like this, because it it all starts from here. All right. We'll be going to, to understand that now. So during a pancake stretch, you should keep your lower and middle back straight here. All right. So uh, 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 a straight line here. But but um, not only because it's more aesthetically pleasant, but also because it requires more hip flexibility to be performed. So the reason why we're going to explore a certain technique is because that technique allows us to stretch better to gain more flexibility not, not just to show off not just to say okay i can do the pancake stretch it's not like that it's more about okay i can do the pancake stretch but i want to do that with the correct technique because in that way i can stretch better i can stretch better i can gain more range of motion and i want to do that because of that all right the kind of flexibility you need to completely straighten your lower and middle back during a pancake stretch, giving it that flat shape, stands mostly in your hip extensors and adductors. As I said, guys, so if you want to move your hips correctly, you must develop a very good level of flexibility in your hip extensors and in your adductors. Like I, I said that. I said that. All right, guys? So these are the main muscles involved in the position. And they move also the hips, okay? So if you want to create that straight line, you got to pay attention to these muscles. And a lot of people come to me, they say, 
like um, Elia, uh, when I do the pancake stretch, I feel that my back is rounded. I feel that my back is rounded. A and I reply to them, okay, but it's not your back which is rounded. The cause of that is your hips placement. If your hips can't go into anterior tilt because your adductors and your hip extensors are pulling them in the wrong position, then your back would be rounded. It's not about the back flexibility. It's about the hips flexibility. All right, guys? As a matter of fact, the stiffer they are, the adductors and the hip extensors, the more they pull the hips in a posterior pelvic tilt, giving your lower back and middle back a rounded shape. All right, guys? This is the explanation. This is the explanation. The pancake technique. Here, we're going to see, uh, again, how to uh, move your hips. All right? So the first technical aspect leads us directly to the second one, the anterior pelvic tilt. Because as I said, you must position your uh, hips in a certain way and your back in a certain way. All right? But uh, these two, uh, like, um, these two elements of the pancake stretch, so the back positioning and the hips positioning, are deeply connected all right all right so they're they're linked in some way if you place your hips correctly then your back goes into the correct position automatically okay so they're really connected so we got to talk about the anterior pelvic tilt so how to position your hips in the pancake stretch all right a flat lower and middle back position is possible only if the hips stay in an anterior pelvic tilt, which is APT. This kind of movement performed in a pancake stretch is called pelvic roll. And we want you both to develop it and understand it to perform a beautiful and correct pancake stretch. All right, and we're going to see that uh, just in a few slides. But uh, now take a look at the following pictures to understand the differences and correct activations. So as you can see, in the first picture, there's no pelvic roll. I'm sitting on my butt and not on my hip belt. Like, can you see here how I'm sitting on, really on my butt? Can you see my butt here? Let me, let me zoom a little bit for you. So can you see how I'm sitting on my butt here? On my butt. And my lower back is rounded here because of this. Because I'm sitting on my butt, not on my hip bones, which is something I'm doing here. Watch how my glutes are not touching the floor. I'm touching the floor with the back part of my leg and with my hip bones, my, my my glutes are are like it seems like I have more glutes, but it's just an activation here. As you can see, first pick, it seems like I don't have any uh, any glutes at all. Second pick, I have the glutes because I'm pushing the glutes out. I'm rolling the pelvis. This is why it's called the pelvic roll. All right, so I'm rolling the pelvis. I'm pushing my hips back. I'm pushing my butt out. I'm sticking my, my bum out, all right? My master in London says, stick your bum out. So I'm sticking my bum out, all right? So I'm sticking my bum out. I'm straightening my lower and middle back. And this is possible, like this straight line is possible only because I'm actually going into anterior tilt, guys, all right? So in the second picture... In the second picture, you can see the correct pelvic roll. And I'm sticking on the top part of my hamstrings, hands on my hip bones. Check out how my lower and middle back positioning changes as I open my hips and I sit on my hip bones. So as soon as I change the position of my hips, my, tr my trunk and my back, my lower and middle back change as well. We want to build first the flexibility, then the understanding of this movement, okay? Because a lot of people, when I when I talk about this, they say, okay, I, I want to do that. 
And they go there, but they don't have the um, necessary flexibility to do that. So you want to do that only if you have the necessary flexibility to do that. Otherwise, you won't be able to, like, to move your hips like that. Okay, so first you got to build the flexibility. Second, you got to build the movement, the, under the understanding of the movement, okay? There's no business in trying the movement if you don't have the necessary flexibility to do it, all right? So now, talking about developing flexibility, guys. So here, we want to develop the right amount of flexibility. All right, so let me give you some um, useful exercises you can do to improve your pancake stretch. Now, guys, these are um, exercises that are perfect for beginners, but also for intermediates and advanced. Because, guys, I teach, um, I actually teach a lot of people how to do the pancake stretch every day. And... Uh, yeah, you know, there are some stretches which are really useful. Doesn't matter the level of preparation. If you can close these stretches, which means that you can perform the hardest variation of these stretches, you probably have the pancake. But uh, the beautiful thing about this is that, okay, this stretch right here, for example, may be very easy so beginners can use this or very very hard so intermediates and advanced can use this all right so uh, to perform this exercise here you start kneeling on the floor with a bench in front of you or a chair i'm using a chair right here and you put one foot on the bench now you grab the bench with your hands and you pull your body towards the front leg which can be bent or straight. Here in the picture, I have my front leg bent, but you can, uh, straight, sorry, but you can keep it also bent. Now, if you keep it bent, make sure to touch your chest with your front knee, and then from there, you slowly extend the leg from there without losing the contact at all times between your chest and your knee. So imagine like bringing your um, chest toward towards your knee and you touch the knee with your chest keeping the front leg bent okay so you bend the knee then from there without losing the contact between um, the chest and the knee you gradually straighten the leg until you can feel the desired amount of stretch here in the back part of your hamstrings all right but you keep your leg bent now second variation if you keep it straight you move your trunk towards your front leg as much as you can okay here is not mandatory that your chest okay touches the knee you go until you feel the stress and you feel that the, your flexibility ends there okay but you always want to make sure during the second variation that your front leg remains straight and with straight i mean really really straight sorry so really 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 straight all right guys so make sure that your front leg remains straight at all times during this exercise here second variation so first variation bent leg second variation straight leg okay this exercise here is excellent for your hamstrings okay so for your hamstrings and also for your glutes this exercise right here is excellent and you can use this to improve your hip extensors flexibility all right guys so really simple to understand really simple to perform not a lot of equipment needed just a bench you know so it's not a lot or a chair all right. If you don't have a chair at home, you have another problem, not the pancake. You have another problem. All right. So uh, only a chair or a bench just to perform this exercise here. But uh, like, guys, I had used this exercise right here to learn my pancake stretch. It's easy. 
I don't want you complic over complicate things. Things are just complicated by themselves. So, so there's no business in complicating them more. So if you want to start, if you need to start, if you feel that, okay, I don't know what exercises should I do to reach the pancake, this is a really nice one because it targets a really specific muscle, not a single one, uh, to be honest, a lot of muscles, uh, the hamstrings and the glutes particularly, okay? And with that, you're going to improve the exact range of motion and the exact muscles you need to perform a pancake stretch. All right, guys? Now, let's have a look at this. As I said, all these exercises are particularly useful, both if you are a beginner or inter an intermediate or an advanced. Now here, for example, guys, uh, I, I missed that. I said that if you can close the exercise, you, you probably have the pancake stretch. Now here, closing the exercise, which means that, okay, I'm performing the most difficult variation of this exercise here. So closing the exercise here means that your chest is touching your knee. Okay, so if you can touch your knee with your chest, with your legs straight and with a straight back, so without creating a rounded shape in your back, so you want to keep your back really straight. If you can do that, then start thinking about another exercise. Start working more specifically on the pancake stretch. All right. Now, this one is a, a, a different example because if you can close this exercise here, which is the chest wall split, you got a split and you got a pancake stretch, of course. So, so it's, uh, it's a little bit different here. Uh, actually, even if you can't close the position, you can do a pancake stretch. Okay, because, um, for example, I myself closed my first pancake stretch before um, I've been able to close this uh, stretch right here, the chest to wall split. So um, this is a wonderful adductor stretch, and it's really useful for the pancake stretch since uh, since it's it's done with straight legs, like the um, like in a pancake stretch, and it targets specifically the uh, adductors, which can limit the anterior pelvic tilt, and of course the leg the um, legs abduction, which as we know now is a um, fundamental component of a pancake stretch. Now, to do this exercise here, start by facing a wall and put your feet against it. Now, you slide your feet out, widening your legs and getting closer and closer to the wall with your hips. Then you reach your max level of stretch, all right? You keep your trunk straight and perpendicular to the floor, and you gradually move your hips closer and closer to the wall, okay? You can keep your hands behind your glutes, behind your hips, just to mm, prevent your hips going out, uh, out from the wall, going back, returning back. Because if you mm, don't have the uh, necessary flexibility just to do the split, and trust me, we don't have that. Most of us don't have that, uh, especially in the beginning. Your hips like want to move away from the wall, okay? And you don't want to do that. So to prevent this kind of movement, just put your hands behind your, your, your glutes, behind your hips, and just keep them there. They won't move if you place your hands behind your glutes, all right? Um, now, the hips, a lot of people ask me, should I uh, anterior tilt? Should I stick my bum out? Of course, you got to do that, especially if you feel that, okay, I'm, I'm feeling a pinching sensation uh, like right inside my hip. Like it's uh, an in impeachment problem. So you don't want to feel that. If you feel that, stick your bum out, just arch that lower back a little bit. But um, like... Uh, as a general rule of thumb, we want to keep the hips in a neutral position, all right? Which means that uh, we want to keep them mm, neutral. So uh, lower and middle back straight, 
and um, the, um, the pelvis in a neutral position, not in anterior tilt nor in a posterior tilt. All right. So here you basically move your uh, feet out. All right, and you uh, drive your hips closer and closer to the wall until you can eventually one day because this stretch is really hard uh, touch the wall with your feet and your hips that day you can say okay i have a side split and of course i got a pancake because a pancake is much easier not much easier but it's actually easier than a side split so if you got a side split you can surely do also a pancake stretch now another exercise and i think that this one is not that um like, a, you know, it's a really famous exercise, but a few people think about the squat as something that may help you understand better your pancake stretch and improve your pancake stretch as well. So the squat is really beneficial for the pancake stretch since in a squat, the hips are and the femurs stay approximately in the same position as for a pancake stretch. What is the first pick? What is the second pick? Can you see how in a pancake, the first pick, and in a squat, the angle between the torso and the legs is actually the same, guys. It's the same. All right? So if you squat more, if you can perform a really deep squat, then that kind of movement, that kind of range of motion, really helps you also in the pancake stretch. So if you squat in a very deep way and you try to improve your legs and trunk and um, hips flexibility directly in a squat position, then your pancake stretch will, will, also, benefit, will also benefit from that. All right? So, for example, take a look at the um, picture at the pictures of this page as you can see both from a side and um like a like imagine that also from the side okay from the side same same like it's the same angle really exact same angle guys exact same angle and um, also from the back you can see how the um legs position is actually the same the same all right so um, squatting more, I will say, uh, will definitely help your pancake stretch. Will definitely help your pancake stretch. Also, the muscles involved in the stretch, so the hip flexor, the hip extensors, the adductors, and uh, the glutes. So when you go into a squat position, you stretch the exact same muscles you need in a pancake stretch. The hip flex, the hip extensors, the glutes, the adductors, so the same. So if you squat more, your pancake stretch will benefit from that. Trust me. Now um, you might be thinking now, from, should I like really go uh, hard on my squat? <laughs> should I uh, like really carry a hundred kilos on my back and really squat hard? You can do that, of course. But here, our purpose is just to squat for flexibility gains. And most of the time, you don't need to improve your maximal strength or just to think about, okay, I want to do a squat with a lot of kilos. You want to do a squat to improve your squat and to improve the depth of the position and to improve your muscles' flexibility. So this is why we are doing these squats here. So you got to have a reason, which is not I want to lift 100 kilos or uh, 200 kilos, but it's okay. I want to move better. I want to increase my squat flexibility, okay? So I think that you should squat with the purpose of increasing your flexibility in the position which means spending more time in the bottom part of a squat, trying to maximize the uh, anterior tilt 
and to open your knees wide, trying to resemble as much as you can a pancake position, okay? Because if you take a look at the position of the femurs and of the back, you can clearly see how this position here, like what is the first pick right here, where I'm um, in a squat position from the side. Can you see how my femurs and my torso like really create a pancake stretch? It's just a matter of knee extension here. If I extended my knees, this would be a pancake stretch for sure, for sure. So if you increase your squat flexibility, okay, you increase also your uh, pancake flexibility. But you got to pay attention to your squat position. It's not just about, okay, I go in the gym, I uh, take a barbell, I put 100 kilos on it, and I squat, and I barely reach um, a parallel line with my glutes, with my, uh, with, my, with my knees, and I come back up, so I'm strong. No, it's not like that. You don't want to carry the weight. You don't want to think about the weight. You want to think about the flexibility. Okay. Of course, if you use weights, you have the huge advantage of having something that pushes you deeper, that pushes you deeper into the stretch. All right. So if you use the weight, you got something that pushes you deeper. So uh, this will enhance your flexibility gains, of course. So use the weights. But they don't have to be heavy weights, but, but uh, just weights that can assist you in the position. All right, guys? Let me know if it makes sense. So, guys, in the squat, we want to increase our flexibility. And to do that, we can use, we, we can use some weights. But we want to make sure that as we go into the position, we feel the stress. We don't want to exit from the position because we are getting tensed or because or I don't know if it can like come up again. No. Here, for example, I'm using 10 kilos, something like that. Just to feel that, okay, I have 10 kilos which are helping me get deeper into the stress. I'm just making an example here. You can use also more. I know that 10 kilos are, aren't much. But uh, yeah, just to let you understand the concept here. All right, so the squat position helps your pancake position, but really make sure you're squatting properly. So think about the uh, anterior tilt. Think about the uh, straight and lower middle back. Really try to do your best to squat with um, good form that resembles in some way a pancake stretch. So you want to push your knees out. You want to straighten your lower and middle back. You want anterior tilt. Make sure of that. And then think about the weight. And of course, you want to make sure that you go full range of motion. Full range of motion. So as, as much as possible close to the grass. Okay? So as to grass, as much as possible. So you push your hips as low as possible. And you want to focus on that bottom position. So as you go into the bottom position of a squat, you really want to make sure, okay, I'm in the bottom position and I want to stay here and I want to gain flexibility here. All right, guys? Now, last exercise right here, the pelvic roll on a bench. So I, I've i talked about the pelvic roll throughout this uh, live show. And here I just want to give you uh, like a better idea of how to uh, perform the uh, pelvic roll. And you can start working on the pelvic roll on a bench. As you can see here, once you have a good level of flexibility, so you have done your squats, you have done your chest to wall split, you, are, you have done your one-legged pike on the bench. So you got a decent level of flexibility. So you want to start working on your pelvic roll because you got to understand the pelvic roll if you want to do the pancake stretch correctly, okay? So... Um, you can start moving your hips on a bench or, a, or or on a chair. Okay, so you sit down, you keep your knees in front of your uh, in front of you, and you spread your legs wide apart. All right, so you spread your knees wide apart, you keep your knees in front of you, and you sit down on a bench. Now you grab the bench with your hands and in between the legs. Okay, so you want to grab the uh, bench or the chair in front of you with the hands in between your legs. 
From there, you pull slightly on the chair and you try to roll your pelvis and sit on your hip bones. So you want to roll your pelvis and you want to sit on your hip bones. All right, guys. So um, as you move your hips, like uh, as I said, when I was uh, showing you my hips placement in a pancake, here is it, like it's a, exactly the same but you are in a slightly different position which is uh, kind of easier i would say kind of easier here so you can control your hips better all right so you want to um, move your your hips from a posterior tilt where you sit down on your glutes to an anterior tilt where you basically sit down on your hips on your hip bones on your hamstrings not on your glutes your glutes are pushed out you want to push out your glutes strongly. You want to really um, stick your bum out, all right? So you want to stick your bum out. You want to push those glutes out, all right? And um, as you do that, you go into an APT, so you know, into an anterior pelvic tilt. And you can see that... Um, like, can you see how in the first pick I have my lower and middle back curved, and in the second pick I have my lower back straight? Why? I'm not focusing on the back. I'm focusing on the hips. So you want to focus on the hips to move your back. And if you see that your back is straight and your glutes are out, and you're sitting down, not on your glutes, but on your hamstrings and on your hip bones. So you want to feel right in, in the top part of your hips that, okay, I'm sitting down there. I'm pushing my hips on the bench and not my glutes. Then you'll know that you're doing that exercise correctly, this exercise correctly. All right? So you can move back and forth to understand the correct placement of your hips. This is what you want to do, all right? So you want to do that. You want to do that for reps, for example, 6 to 10 reps. You want to move. You want to move between the two positions. Then once you got a feeling about that, so once you got a, uh, a deep understanding of the exercise, then you can uh, start working on this same movement, but done in a pancake stretch. So start with this variation because your legs here are bent because you're bending your knees. So the uh, muscles won't pull that much on your hips and you can move your hips freely. Then if you can do that on the bench, then start doing that on the floor. In a pancake stretch. All right, guys. Does it make sense? So these are the main exercises I suggest you do to improve your pancake stretch. Now, uh, I got a case study here. I got Federico, which is one of my online students. And he started training with me almost a year ago, and he's really close to his first pancake stretch. He uh, sent me this uh, pick, the second pick, just a few days ago, and he said, like, can you remember where we started? And I, know, and I said, of course, I remember. Like, you were, like, uh, miles away from the floor, and uh, now you can touch the floor with your head, and soon you'll touch the floor with your abs and chest as well. And uh, we've been using, among others, of course, the exercises that you have seen at this live show. Like the chest wall split, the one leg pie, uh, the squat, the squat with the weight. Like, guys, I'm teaching you what I do. Not fancy exercises, not bad promises, not something that, okay, it's cool, you know, it's trendy on TikTok. So I, I want to show you this uh, shitty exercise, which will lead you nowhere. I'm showing you what works in practice, what the uh, what creates results. All right, I'm showing you that. I'm showing you what I'm doing with my students, and I got a case study here. As you can see, 
his hips started to move in some way and he's now able to touch his nose on the floor something that mm, when we started seeing impossible and uh, can you see how like the hips are placed differently here like it's not only about the trunk it's about the hips can you see how the hips are start moving now if we like wanted to create more and more stretch what would be um, what would um, we do all right we would roll the pelvis more can you see how he's sitting on his glutes too much too much he needs to push his glutes out roll the pelvis more and this will create this straight and nice line here on the lower and middle back and it will allow him to catch the floor with his abs and chest all right so the reason why we are still struggling with the last part of the pancake stretch is because we have to take our time working on the pelvic roll and to work on the pelvic roll as i said you gotta understand the anatomy of the position so the muscles involved in the position and you gotta start stretching them like crazy so one leg by stretch the chest walls stretch uh the chest wall split are some examples of exercises you can do to maximize your flexibility gain all right so your flexibility gains will be um really 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 uh consistent if you start working with the right exercise all right now guys i always show this photo right here because i know that it has been like uh, 52 minutes since i started this workshop right here this online uh, workshop uh, for free on youtube like i'm delivering information just for free uh, but uh, i know that after 52 minutes you may you may be feeling a little bit a, a little bit overwhelmed all right because you know now you know a lot of things now you know that you need to work on your hip flexion on your hip abduction on your hip extensors on your adductors on your glutes on your gastrocnemius on your calves and you gotta do these exercises and you gotta straighten your lower back and you gotta work on your pelvic roll so i know that these may sound like complicated ideas they're not they're not they're really easy it really gets easier and easier and easier and easier and easier as you move on it all starts to make sense as you are along the path but you gotta have a path so this is the reason why today i wanna uh, show you my pancake stretch video course okay the pancake stretch video course is a course where you can learn the path that will lead you to the pancake stretch because you gotta be on a path if you want to reach the pancake stretch okay so this is a netflix like video course so you can learn everything you need to reach a pancake stretch and a squat okay with episodes so you don't have to watch the entire video course as one as once okay at once you can watch episodes that will lead you there and there are three main sections in this video course so the basics where you start from zero and you learn how to stretch your muscles from there okay so you're a, com a complete beginner you don't know what you do you you're like uh, federico in the first uh, pick like uh, miles away from the floor so you start here okay and if you're a coach maybe you can take the exercises you'll find here just to teach your students how to get there how to start from zero then you got the second part the preparatory part where you learn the preparatory drills for your squat and pancake position these are harder positions all right but not as hard as the positions you can find in the third part, which, the, which is the specific part where you learn the specific and advanced drills to learn the pancake stretches. So we're going to get there. In the third part, 
we're gonna get there we're gonna explore the specific drills you need to do to close that pancake stretch on the floor with your abs on the floor all right so abs on the floor chest on the floor head on the floor everything on the floor and you'll understand all of that in the third part with unique and awesome pancake stretches which are specific okay specific for the pancake stretch here i am guys so um now what if i told you that you can get all of this all of this so a netflix like video course where you can learn the pancake stretch the squat and everything you need to um know to reach these positions and you can do that with episodes whenever you want all right you can stop come back there and watch the entire video course which is nine hour long nine hours guys a lot of stuff in there you don't have to watch it all at once take small steps watch episodes learn the stretches but uh you can see how how many information is there how many information is there okay you can find a lot of stuff there okay and you can get everything now for just $55 with a lifetime access. So you don't have to sign up for a monthly payment or a membership. It's just like, okay, $55 now, lifetime access forever. All right. But uh, I want to I wanna say something more. If you do that now, if you do that now, following the link in the description of this video here, you can have a 20% more. All right, guys. So a 20% more on the discounted price of $55. So it's like $40 or something like that. For a lifetime access, nine hours of video course where you can learn everything about the pancake stretch. All right, guys. This is a one in a life. <laughs> like, there's a one-time offer, all right, which you can access only if you click in the link in the description of this YouTube video or wherever you want, all right? And you can find the page with the Pancake Video Course. You sign up there and you get a 20% off. All right, guys, to learn everything about the Pancake, everything I, sa I, I said so far, all right? How's that sound? Let me know, guys. Now, I'm going to watch real quick at your um at your comments right here hello guys hello thank you for being here thank you for the seminar thank you for pablo my pleasure hello andy so nice to um to have you here go uh, follow his um, youtube channel finally you're on youtube the body weight practice really smart guy really good guy thank you so much for your comment um andy thank you so much wait one year one year where is the do the pancake in five minutes part yeah <laughs> guys i know like i said um nine hours of video course because i'm a crazy motherfucker and i'm not creating something that is done to sell I'm not creating products to sell products. I'm creating products because I love the product. <laughs> like, I, 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 like I don't care to... Like, of course, I do care to sell the product, but uh, I want to put in my programs, in my products, what actually works. And it took me nine hours for the pancake video course because there's a lot of information. There's no the five minutes, guys. There's no the five minutes. You got to understand that it takes time both to understand the, the uh, pancake, both to develop the pancake. All right? Nine hours. So there's not a five-minute part. And um, I really hope that you um, are passionate about the uh, discipline. But uh, as I said, take small steps. You don't have to watch all the way through. 
just watch episodes. Like uh, you do that on Netflix. There's a, I don't know, there's a Squid Game, I don't know, a, a Syria on uh, on Netflix, and you don't watch the entire uh, the the entire season at once. You take like you you watch episode number one, and then you watch episode number two, and by the end of the day, they're like nine or more hours. The same here. But you learn something. You learn how to stretch. And I have a lot of students who come to me and they say, like, Aliyah, I bought your pancake video course and, I, and I've and i learned the pancake video, the, the pancake, of course, but a, a, lot of mo- a lot more things. I improved my squat position. I improved the way I I move. I improved my hips, my hips flexibility. I improved my splits. I improved my I don't know my um, my pike position. I improved my yoga practice. I improved my um, my my power lifting movements. I improved my calisthenics movements. I improved my handstand because in nine hours I give you. A lot of information, not only about the pancake stretch, but about the flexibility journey, but about a flexibility mentality. All right, that's the message. And you can all, you can have all of that fifty-five dollars, not euros, dollars, which is much less in euros, and up twenty percent off. So fifty-five minus. 20%. All right, guys. Only if you click on the link in the description. Uh, um, I love your courses. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jay Sarah. Thank you so much for the presentation. My pleasure. My, my pleasure. Thank you so much, Andy. I really appreciate that. And uh, I really appreciate that you are on YouTube. Finally, go follow this guy here. Bodyweight practice, really, really good information right there. And I love also um, hearing from you, man. And I want to give uh, a free video course to uh, V. Maya, which uh, I don't know your name, but uh, I want to give you a free uh, video course. Okay, a free pancake video course and um you're the winner tonight and to um obtain your prize okay to obtain your video course the procedure is as follows you go on instagram okay you check out elia underscore body weight okay and you send me a message uh, saying okay i'm the winner of the pancake video course and i'm gonna send you the pancake video course for free right there okay so do that as soon as you want, okay? And I'm going to send you the uh, pancake video course. And uh, uh, this is a, a question. I'm doing this kind of stretch during brushing my teeth by putting one leg on top of the <laughs> bathtub. Is this also working? Of course, of course, of course. I'm sure it's working. And uh, I started, uh, Pablo asked me, uh, I started gymnastics as an adult and I'm really, really unflexible. I'm working in all my flexibility goals but i wonder if it would be best to focus on just one at a time now guys uh, regarding that i know what you mean i know what you mean there are a lot of stretching positions and that's why in my book here for example uh, split sucking the complete playbook I, I i say the complete playbook to learn the splits and drastically improve your flexibility level so why drastically improve your flexibility level and i always say the splits are flexibility because if you want to improve your uh, lower body flexibility then learning the splits will definitely change the way you do that because you can be focused on some positions and you don't waste time with mm, i mean shitty exercises and useful exercises. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say that there are uh, useful exercises and unuseful exercises. But if you want to improve your lower body flexibility and you want to do that, because in some way you want to reach the splits, or I don't know, the splits are one of the best tools for the job to achieve that goal. Okay. And you can like uh, learn the splits with the book or wherever you want here you got all the progressions on all the exercises you gotta do 
to reach the splits and you can check out split sucking on amazon type in uh type in split sucking just uh, <laughs> in the search bar uh, of amazon or just following the link in this um video's description all right so um yeah they uh, v maya i'm really happy you won the um the prize uh write me uh an instagram message all right so guys that's all from the flexibility guy it has been a real pleasure to be with you tonight remember that only with this video right here if you're watching this video right here you can have an, um, an amazing discount on the pancake video course 55 dollars minus 20 percent so a 20 percent off on 55 dollars only if you access the uh, video course through the link in the description down below all right guys it has been a real pleasure and i can't wait to talk with you soon again at the mobility academy show have a nice stretch that's all from the flexibility guy See you in the next video.